Well, I'd like to start by apologizing on behalf of our esteemed curator, Rabbi Martin, uh, Dr. Venetia Porter, who unfortunately couldn't make it today due to unforeseen sort of circumstances. So uh, the honor is now mine to introduce the art artist, Imran Qureshi, who's been with us for the last three days, giving a wonderful workshop on miniature uh, art. So Imran was born in Hyderabad and trained in miniature painting at the National College of Arts in Lahore, where he now teaches. He has developed an undeniably contemporary practice, but that is deeply rooted in the tradition of 16th century Mughal miniature art. His practice encompasses figurative and abstract works on paper, monumental paintings, and site-specific installations, as well as video installations. He marries traditional techniques and motifs with conceptual ideas and current issues. And reflections on contemporary life are, both, are often the underlying themes of his work. His work has been shown in over 130 exhibitions worldwide as it, and is in the collections of major public institutions, such as the British Museum, the V&A, the Metropolitan in New York, the Deutsche Bank Collection, the Guggenheim of the Dummy, and this is just a name, but a very few. And he's also shown in major biennales around the world, including Venice, Sydney, Sharjah, Thessaloniki, and Lahore. He's been the recipient of the, and excuse me if, if I'm not pronouncing this properly, the Citara e Etias yeah, yes. Prize. It's the highest presidential award by the government of Pakistan in 2021. He was also awarded the Shah Jabinani Art Prize in 2011. Uh, the, he was awarded the uh, Deutsche Bank Artist of the Year Award in 2013, and he was awarded the Medal of the Arts by the State Department of Washington in 2017. So, uh, Imran, in your words, once describing your work, you said, my work is very connected to the tradition that gave birth to it. But it, is also, it also tells the story of that time in a different language and from a different perspective. I retain my voice when telling the story. Well, we can't wait to hear your story. And without further ado, I leave it to you, Imran, to tell us about your work and the evolution of your practice. And we will start with your talk, after which we will have a Q&A session where you can ask your heart's content. Yeah, so I should use the other mic. So, okay. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum and thank you very much for coming. Uh, thank you, Sara. Thank you, everyone. Sara Warki, uh, Shadin, everyone who has been taking care of me for past so many days. And uh, Venetia Porter especially, and uh, so I'm here to speak about my work, and without wasting any time, so I should start my journey, uh, how I started it off. So in 1990, I went to, I was born in Hyderabad, Sin, and I grew up there, and that was the city which was not that much, much exposed to contemporary art. Uh, but luckily, my teacher at that time period, uh, and I was a student at public school Hyderabad, and the teacher was really amazing because I realized it, it later because when I went to art school, there were so many exercises or assignments which I already did in my grade six or five uh, because he was a graduate of JJ School of Art, Bombay, and he was 80 plus of uh, his age. and. So, and his way of teaching was really amazing. Even at that time, he was coming to this class and he was, he was saying nothing and he was just giving a piece of paper to everyone and a bucket full of water. He was just keeping it on one corner of the class and then he was sitting and just thinking like this for 10 minutes and all the kids were looking at his face. And then he was standing it up, standing up and writing down on with a chalk on blackboard and he was just writing one sentence and then he was quietly sitting back and we were reading it and then we started making our art so it could be anything it was a poetic sentence or very 
something which has uh, multiple, uh, which leave you to think about uh, different things. So it was not restricted to uh, one image or one thing. So, and that was amazing thing because in school usually the practice was totally opposite to this idea of giving freedom to children, of creating artwork. Uh, so, and when, when I went to National College of Arts in 1990, so I was exposed to so many things which I already was taught by the, that teacher in Hyderabad. Uh, and when I started teaching there, so there, there are, uh, National College of Arts is an institution uh, which is about 130 years old and it used to be called Mayo School of Art in British time period and uh, uh, now it is National College of Arts. In 60s they changed it to National College of Arts. Uh, so there, there are different departments over there, are design department, architecture, fine art, and in fine art there were further division of painting, sculpture, miniature painting, and printmaking. So you have to choose one area of specialization uh, for this four-year degree course program. Uh, so I chose painting as my area of specialization because I saw miniature painting, I practiced it in my second year, and I realized this is something which I cannot, I cannot do uh, because I was too much into other activities also, theater, music, and I love to enjoy the freedom of working on large scale canvases and other things. But my teacher who was teaching miniature painting over there, Ustad Bashir Ahmed, he was always asking me that you should come to miniature and I said, no, this is not my cup of tea. And I, I was just, I started avoiding him and I was just going through other longer ways to my studio instead of passing through miniature painting because he was always just looking at me and asking me if you should change your department and come to miniature. And I told him once that I cannot do this because this is something which I cannot do, to be very honest. And he said that I can tell the smell coming from the pot what kind, what quality of rice is inside the pot. So I'm just telling you. And I, then I realized that if a teacher is saying so much, and miniature painting is something, especially at that time, uh, which you can only learn at NCA, National College of Arts. So I thought I should take it seriously. And there must be, because there, there were the stereotypes and these ideas about miniature painting that there is no margin for self-expression in miniature. It is more about copying old traditional miniature paintings, uh, historic miniature painting, and it's, it has nothing to do uh, proving yourself as an independent artist. So, and I took it as a challenge, and I was not agreeing with this idea. So I decided to take miniature, and I changed my department from painting to miniature and started learning miniature over there and the training was very academic, very, very disciplined because the teacher was very traditionalist and he was, he has his own ideas about the tradition, about the art making and different things, uh, which I totally respect. But I was at the same time disagreeing as well with his ideas and thoughts. So there was always a debate with him and uh, which was quite healthy thing. So, so after graduation, uh, there was this new debate about the new miniature movement or what contemporary miniature painting is all about. And I kept finding answer to this notion of uh, this movement of miniature painting or what contemporary miniature painting is all about. So I, I was doing different things. I was, in the beginning, I was trying to juxtapose old traditional historic images on the surface making a new statement out of it. I was looking at the substitute to the traditional techniques in my art practice, uh, but getting the same effect, same sensibility, same feeling. Uh, I was also looking at the idea of a figure as a main subject matter, because in museum or in history, you can see there are thousands of miniature paintings with the idea on the subject of sin single standing figure in one frame. So, this was the school, and uh, this was my painting called My Younger Brother. So this was 1995, 
and I painted my brother's portrait standing in a landscape. And so I was studying the stylization of a figure in miniature painting, the posture and the way it is looking and uh, uh, what he's wearing is from 70s, uh, which is from past, but it's, it's still it is very contemporary idea of painting a figure in miniature painting in 70s uh, costume. So I was just making a connection between the history and the contemporary miniature painting through these kind of ideas. And here there are also I try to do some experimentation with the framing as well. So that, that's a tablet which we use in school. So I designed the frame in the shape of a tablet and then I did the marbling on it as a element of decoration. And I was also co uh, copying, uh, uh, commenting on historic miniatures. There was a miniature painting of Shah Abbas embracing, uh, Shah, Jahangir embracing Shah Abbas and they both are, both are standing on the on a loin and goat which are uh, sitting together and smiling and it was very political kind of a statement so I painted a modern figures and the loin has eaten up the head of the goat and they are still smiling and then the same idea I transform into Basuli Hill miniature painting uh, format uh, and because there was a huge collection of Kangra miniature painting or Pahadi school miniature painting in Lahore Museum and I used to get, go there a lot. I was really fascinated by the foliage used in that landscape. I was fascinated by the symbolism uh, because each and everything matters a lot in historic miniatures. There's a, for example, there's a painting of Radha and Krishna sitting in a garden and uh, so everything in that painting is in couple. So and which justify the love between these two uh, figures. So here I uh, use the same figure and the loin is attacking the weaker animal, uh, uh, animal on the right side. And this painting is called Beware the Buyers. This is called Hajra Loves Rain. So when we make our surface for miniature painting, uh, it's called Vasli paper and we paste four layers of paper or together with hand cooked glue. Uh, and we, to get it dry, we apply paper tapes on the edges of the paper. And later on, our teacher was asking us to hide those tapes uh, behind the beautiful borders, ornamentation, or the framing. But I was more interested into the process of miniature painting. I was really loving those paper tapes uh, when we were making colors, we were checking them at the edge of the paper and I was more interested into those things. So I was not hiding them and I started bringing them as part of my imagery. So this was the beginning, the way I used the paper tape from the printed books uh, as an el uh, element of design and there's a text in it which somehow relate with the image over there. And this painting is called Hajra Loves Rain. So again, you see the foliage at the background, the landscape, the eye, the color palette. It's very much like the traditional miniature painting, but the content and the subject is very modern. And then in 99, when India and Pakistan did nuclear explosions, so the figure was replaced with, with this nuclear warhead uh, image. And you can see, this is called missile is a missile where one missile is filled with the foliage uh, and the other missile is, is still dark from inside. So they have different kind of opposite uh, elements inside, but the end result is same because when they did nuclear explosion, they were celebrating it. They were giving positive vibes to their nation, but everybody knows this is something which is all about the destruction of mankind. So, uh, so I just painted two missiles, they are standing and the, uh, the title was Missile is a Missile. Uh, again, you can see the paper tapes, mark making all around the surface. This is called City of Garden. So I was trying to break the boundary of miniature painting. 
and it was getting more liberal, more open on the surface, slowly. This is called belongings. Uh, my interest was really moving towards the mark making, the looseness of color, paint, and the, in contrast to that, I was making very carefully drawn images like that trunk over there. So these are picture, there's a picture of a one woman sitting over there and then that was the time when there were so many news coming from Afghanistan about the women over there, their role and how uh, things are happening politically over there. And so I decided, I made a trunk like image at, in the, uh, over there where you keep your belongings in it. As a childhood we used to see our grandparents and everybody has a trunk at the home and we were curious to know what is inside the trunk. So, and I found it that kind of image as well. So I was just making a connection with the image at the top and image at the bottom. And you can see very freely drawn image of a uh, drawing of a fort like architectural space around those women. So again, the mark making and the layering and everything is really you can see the process and you can see the finished images as well within the same uh, painting. This is called love story. Uh, when I got married, so the subject was changed and it, was, it became more like a personalized kind of thing. Uh, as a student, my teacher used to say there is no miniature painting without a figure in it. So I was not agreeing with him. So I started, as a reaction to this, I started making miniatures which has no figure in it, but it's still there is a strong narrative, there is a dialogue, there is a conversation between different images. So I made these, the foliage is still coming from the same landscape uh, from miniature painting at the top and then there is a tree at the bottom and you see the red uh, plant which is growing all over the uh, the form of the tree is the parasite uh, plant. I was looking at an image of Mughal um, Pahadi school miniature painting in a book. So there was a parasite plant in it and the description says that the artist doesn't know uh, the color of the parasite plant so that's why he has painted it in a wrong way but it's still it's, a, it's something which is destroying the landscape. So I just took it as a negative uh, character in my painting, the red plant, which is growing, growing and just uh, uh, entangled through, uh, around a form of a tree. And division of space is also coming from the division of space in miniature painting, the traditional one. So usually you see the border around it and you see a lot of mark making uh, around it. So it Initially, the, all the miniatures are like this, but then we hide them behind the ornamentation and very flat color washes so that you don't see these messy areas. But I was always enjoying these messy areas. So there was always a contrast in my painted imagery, uh, the carefully drawn images and the loosely painted abstract marks. Uh, and I was, and in terms of subject also, I was dealing with the idea of life or death, beauty or violence. So these are two contrast things. So conceptually as well as formally, uh, there is always a contrast in my paintings. This is called Hope Street. Uh, I was in Liverpool and that was my first exposure towards any Western country. In U I went to UK on a residency in 2001 and I was living at Hope Street and there was this uh, monument, a sculptural piece by some artist. So he made the cemented cast of trunks, multiple trunks on the footpath. And there was a sea at the back of the, that. Uh, you can see uh, the water uh, at the, in the background. So the connection of the trunks and the water in the background was very sad to me because I was looking at so many immigrants in that part who went, go there with a lot of dreams, but then the reality is totally different. So I was just started making comment on that as well. 
this is called west is west so i was also the use of map in west was totally a new thing for me the way they wherever they were going they were looking at the map if i was asking them uh, where this house is if the even the house is in the next street they were looking at the map and they were telling me you should you should take left turn right turn and uh, whatever the details were but it was very new thing for me because in pakistan if you ask somebody they will say you just go there and it's on your right side so but there they, they have they confuse you a lot so i was getting really panicking over there so i started dealing with the idea of map because all the trees are same and there are abstract lines which are representing the idea of mapping or directions and the dots are also uh, actually the trees are in uh, enlargement of these dots so all the trees are same of same size same scale because in in my country all the houses are different uh, big small colors everything nothing is similar but in if you go to uk or europe all the houses are same all the streets it's hard to recognize or the differentiate different areas different part of the city so i started making the similar uh, images in my work surface as content so in lahore there is a market on every sunday of old books on the footpath so i used to go there a lot it's in anarkali bazaar and i used to go there a lot and i was looking at the books and there were so many old books uh, with interested interesting content and there even their condition is so inspiring to me uh, so i was buying them and collecting those old books and they became the one of the very important subject matter of my work at that time uh, so once i found a book which was on the tailoring manuals and it was in urdu but all the all the dresses were from the west so i used the pages of those books as the final surface of my wasli paper and uh, and there was already a drawing on it and i started painted painting my own imagery at the top of it this painting is called god of small things this is 2002 and uh, this was the time when there was a lot of intervention into that region by america and west and uh, they were giving us sending us instructions how we have to live how we have to move and there was a lot of interference uh, between countries so i just started make, make, make making a map of a a new world through this machine in the in the middle which has a camouflage pattern on it and how it's stitching the clothes for the people over there so the heading of each chapter in that tailoring manual book was uh, i think it was just a complete statement and it was such a powerful image for me and it was hard for me to add my own vocabulary at the top of it but so i i was really conscious that how much i have to add at the top of it so that it should not destroy whatever is already over there because the the pages were already uh, loaded with very interested interesting and heavy content so this painting is called how to cut a front uh, a burqa sorry how to cut a burqa it's written over there burqa kaatne ka tarika so there is a burqa veil on the left side and then i added my scissors coming from all side this was the time when uh, america attacked afghanistan and burqa was became a main subject matter in all media press how to cut front of a burqa how to cut a bra how uh, how to cut an american pantaloon no how to cut an american pantaloon with belt how to cut an american pant english pantaloon without belt difference between american and english jacket how to cut an artillery pantaloon how to cut front of an arti artillery pantaloon 
there are extra pockets in artillery pantaloon than the civilian ones. So these were actually headings of these uh, tailoring manual book. Game of tenses. So this was a book from the English grammar, uh, uh, how to learn the grammar, uh, English grammar with the Urdu uh, sentences in it. So will they be playing, uh, how will they be playing and there are different sentences written over there. So I added my own imagery at the top of it. There's a mapping thing on the left side and then there's the image of a warhead. This is called take it or leave it. Uh, because in Afghanistan at that time they were bombing, they were throwing packets which has explosive material in it and then they were food parcel as well. As well. So, so many children died because they confused between food and the explosive material. So I had made two parcel at the bottom and the image of a trees being cut by with the scissors, very tiny scissors. Easy cutting. So I started making in these lines which I take them as a mapping thing, I started making the shape of a U because there were so many U-turns between the policies, between the government. Uh, policies and everyone was taking U-turn in their policies and uh, easy cutting. This is again easy cutting. No, this is called U-turns. Mapping terrains. So these colors were coming from the American flag, red, blue and white and I started make, creating a new map with these colors. So the miniature, the idea of a boundary of a miniature painting was just disappearing and the imagery was really getting free on the surface. This is called perfect harmony. This is again 2005. Four or five. This is called in between. So when I started miniature painting, I started learning miniature painting. So first exercise was to draw a grid on the paper. It was given by my teacher, and he asked us to divide the grid, uh, like filled up the grid with a fine pencil with diagonal, horizontal, vertical lines to get a control on your line and your. Uh, pencil drawing thing, your skills. So we used to fill up a really large surfaces with these grid, small tiny boxes with these lines and it was taking months and months to do this exercise. So later on I realized that this was the beginning of a traditional art practice but then this exercise was really modern. This image which we were creating through these grid and lines was really modern and really uh, contemporary and so I decided to go back to the same roots and uh, juxtaposing it with my painted imagery which I developed in years. So I added a heart like shape which is stuck between two uh, columns of this traditional practice and it's called in between because there is a, always a tension, uh, there was always a debate between the traditional miniature painting and what we were doing in miniature painting. This is again from the same series, foundations and portrait. So I was going back to the basic of miniature painting, uh, how to paint a traditional miniature painting and uh, because my teacher was always discouraging me to if I will do other abstract like uh, 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 work so uh, it will destroy my the skills of me as a miniature painter like whatever I have learned I will lose those skills so and I was going back to my traditional practice just to see how much I have lost in this journey but I every time I was learning something new into that traditional technique as well so this is a portrait self portrait which I made and the idea of portrait was transformed into this abstract oval shaped uh, images. The series is called portrait. Again.
again portrait. So this was more like a very personal kind of narrative. Uh, portraits of different people, their connection, their relationship with each other. And then there's a portrait, image of portrait, missile, and mine, the recent vocabulary of mark making and this red blood like marks on, at the top of it. Figure versus figure. So, as I said earlier, that I was always looking at the idea of figure, single standing figure in miniature painting. This was in 2006 when I created a series called Moderate Enlightenment, and I kept working on it on and off. And I, from 2006 till 2010, I was just working on this series. There are 20 paintings in this series. And these are the portraits of religious people who are interested in religion. Uh, but after 9-11, people started making a big segregation line between the religious people and the modern one. So if a, like this is a figure which is holding a Nike bag and standing like this, so people don't connect these modern or daily life element with these religious people. They were immediately taking them uh, as someone connected with terrorism or extremism. So this is again a modern figure standing, holding a folder and looking at, uh, looking in the sky. So he's a person who is just blowing bubbles in the space, just enjoying his life, wearing a camouflage socks. Uh, if I would be wearing camouflage socks, that's a fashion statement. But if a mullah is wearing camouflage socks, people take it as something threatening to them. So this was a total change of mentality uh, of people after this 9-11 thing. She's just standing in a landscape. And so he's lying in a landscape, writing a love letter to his wife and looking at a dragon, the, which is in couple, which is there as a couple, and he's just staring at it. And there's a cut in, at the top part of this painting. So there are a lot of miniature painting in history that the painting is from Mughal period, but then when the Sikhs came, they intervened into that painting and they added something or they inserted some other image inside the same painting. So I was also dealing with this idea that how other powers were interfering into someone else's spaces and uh, making some kind of uh, something which is not perfectly fitting into that space, but it's still someone is interfering into someone else's space. She's doing workout. just enjoying rain, changing shirt. So these are very common things, but with this beard thing, people just change their perception about the whole idea. So he's looking at the other side and there's a girl on the other side, so he just. This is another figure which is wearing camouflage, trousers, standing on a landscape and uh, looking at the dragonflies. For me, dragonflies are symbolizing freedom in space or the idea of freely moving in, a, in the space. So he's just looking at them and planning something. Again, the figure is replaced with the shirt. And then in 2011, there was this it's a very sad incident of uh, killing of, mob killing of two innocent brothers in one of the town in Sialkot, which is two hour drive from Lahore. So the video got really viral and the images were of the two dead bodies hanging upside down and they were bleeding. So I just saw a glimpse of that video and I just shut it down. But that image was stuck to my mind. It was very disturbing. And I thought maybe this is the end of the society. And uh, I mean, this was such a harsh uh, uh, 
something which happened to this society. Uh, but the way people responded to it, the way, way people reacted to it, that was very hopeful for me. Everyone was on road, they were talking about it, and they were, there were big discussion on TV, media, and a lot of demonstrations against this act. So that gave a hope to the nation that people is still want, the majority wants the peace and change in the society. So, and I, I, one night I was unable to sleep because that image was stuck to my mind. So I went to my studio and I took impression of my own body on the paper uh, with the red color. And, and then I painted the foliage coming out of it, which was representing hope. This series is called Le uh, This Leprous Brightness. And this is the whole body of myself. It's a self-portrait and a really large, eight feet long paper. This is the detail. And then the body was replaced with this kind of image as well, two pages of book. And this painting is called Opening Word of This New, uh, new Scripture. This is called Made in Sawat. So in 2013, I think, Sawad is a valley in upside on the north, and there was this Taliban who came in the valley, and they just uh, took over the whole valley, and they were bringing their own laws and own things, implementing those things. So the main target was uh, the women over there as well. So there is a talcum powder box, uh, which my mother used to use, and all my family aunts and they were using it uh, and it was very fa famous talcum powder called Tibbat talcum powder and so I was looking at that box and I came to know that this was made in Sawat so and it has image of this female portrait on both side of the talcum powder box so I opened up that uh, tin box and uh, covered the whole text over there just left made in Sawat Pakistan and then I had a video projection of Taliban in the Sawat Valley on the other uh, other side of this against this woman and they are targeting that body embracing a space so in 2011, uh, 2001 I went to India on a Khoj workshop uh, which where they had 15 international artists and 15 India and then we were moved to a Modi Nagar, which is a small town uh, an hour away from Delhi. And we were living in a farmhouse, uh, and all artists were supposed to work, and then there was an open studio like all other artists' residency programs. So the courtyard was made up of this beautiful tiled floor, and it was reminding me of my wife's paintings, which has a lot of geometry in, in it. And so I, d I decided to make my foliage over there. So there was a blue wall on, on, it was surrounded by blue wall and one wall had toilets at the back. So there was this huge seepage problem. So the wall has a lot of marks of seepage and it was so delicate, those marks and very painterly. So I was really loving those marks. So I started making the blue from that wall and it's just taking over the tiled floor and floating over in the space. So this was my, my very first site-specific installation on this side. So I painted this roundel form of the foliage, but I misplaced, I just didn't paint one of the tile over here. And I painted the tile somewhere else just to really weaved the, my painted imagery into that space. Then this was in 2006 in Sultan Mosque, Singapore. This was first Singapore biennial. So at the rooftop of the mosque, there was this blue pipe running all over the place. And the color was so beautiful, the blue color. So I extended that pipe with the false pipe and made a lot of multiple openings to it. And I, then I uh, created this illusion that the pipe has been leaked 
and it's the water is coming out. So it's this piece is called Vazu or Vadu. It's about the cleansing yourself spiritually when you go to a mosque or a re religious space. This is the detail. And then the same idea when it traveled to Venice. It was an old heritage building. It was Venice Biennial, one of the collateral event. And, and it was all under construction, I mean under renovation. So I extended the pipes and made the opening referring to the water in the city and how it's entering into the architectural space. This was Kabul, Bagh e Babur, uh, and uh, this is called Queen's Palace. So there was this exhibition in 2008, and this was before Singa, uh, this was before this Venice Biennial, actually. So, so this was, they asked me to do something over there, and they invited me. This was the exhibition of artists from Afghanistan, Iran, and Pakistan, and this was the first contemporary art exhibition over there after decades of war in the region. And when I entered this in this room, they were giving me some other space, but I was not uh, attracted by that space or I was not sure about that space. When I entered this hall, they, these, there were five, six windows on right side and there was very strong sunlight uh, projections coming on the floor. And they, those were so much they were really strong images of windows and they were growing with the time as soon as the sun is moving. So the uh, sunlight was also moving. So I decided to create this illusion on the floor with my painting that the windows has a stained glass and you are looking at the floor. So you see these details. But actually on the window there is nothing because when I was in Kabul for this exhibition, there was so much happening in, in the name of development, but actually there was so much uncertainty as well. So there was a sadness as well all over the city. Uh, there was uncertainty and nobody was sure whether it's permanent or not. So I was just commenting on that idea that there is a stained glass image, but actually on the window there is nothing, it's just all clean. So I mask each and every window on different time periods. The first window I mask at 11 o'clock, then the second one at 11.30, then 12.30, then one o'clock. So, so each window has a different length of shadows. So during the day, it was overlapping the painted imagery, and then it's moving to the other window, and then it was uh, moving, uh, uh, the, uh, it was fitting very perfectly at a certain time period on my painted imagery. Then it was moving, and then it was fitting perfectly on the second, third window, and so it's go, uh, going on. This is the detail. And then it was moving, so it became like this. This is Sharjah Biennial. This is called Blessings Upon the Land of My Love, 2011. And I painted the courtyard. I, I was talking about the idea of courtyard. There were courtyards in all houses traditionally, and their purpose and function was different, but in these days, everything has been taken over by the violence. Wherever we are going, everything moves around the idea of terrorism, war, and these things. So you, when you look at it from a distance, it looks like it's all bloody kind of environment, but when you go close to it, there are flowers which are up, appearing out of it. And, uh, so there was a tension between the viewer and the Im uh, painting. Uh, it was attracting you and it was repelling you at the same time. Uh, I think this was one of my work which I never thought before that how an art can be powerful. Uh, but when I did this piece, there were people, visitors from all over the world. They were, uh, but their reaction and response was equally uh, it was all equal because everybody was connected themselves with this artwork and a lot of people I saw they were actually crying and sitting over there and they have their own stories they are relating it with the 
Arab Spring movement, they were relating it with the World War II if they are from Europe. American had the connection with the 9-11. There was Japanese woman, she was also crying. I was curious to know why she's crying because she said we just had tsunami, so she was just connecting it with that. So uh, this piece was just made me think about that an art can be really work at so many levels. And then I was going back to miniature, as I said earlier. Uh, so I, was, I, I started painting, making the miniatures of the same large-scale uh, installations uh, and going back to the smaller scale and just documenting those uh, sites because after the exhibition, they were cleaning up the site, sites. Uh, it was not permanent piece. So as a Mughal, they used to record the history in miniatures. So I was recording my own site-specific installation in the format of miniature painting. So this was the courtyard of Sharjah. This is again the same courtyard of Sharjah. So here I was looking at the multiple perspective and different point of views about the same thing. On the left window you see there is this sewerage uh, thing in the middle as in Sharjah courtyard and the blood fountain of blood is coming out of it and the wall is placed in a way as we have uh, these kind of diagonal corners in, in Islamic miniatures or manuscripts. So I'm just making these kind of corners uh, on the both side of the painting. And then on the right window, you are looking at the same scenario, but from outside of the wall. But on the left window, you are sitting inside the courtyard and the wall is on the other side. So it's the same thing, but you are looking from different two different point of views. And then 2013, Metropolitan Museum of Art, and how many rains must fall before the stains are washed clean. So when they invited me to do the rooftop, after seeing my work at the Sharjah Biennial, they wanted me to do something over there. But when I was packing up my suitcase for New York, there was this Boston bomb blast which happened and in a marathon race. And uh, when I was packing up, the news was on TV and they were repeatedly using the term finishing line. Uh, and I was thinking uh, that somehow this, this, the term finishing line was stuck to my mind. And when I started painting, I started off painting my work over there. And, but that, that thing was still in my mind. And I was not finding the reason of doing the same thing in New York again in the same way. Because the context was totally different. But I was thinking, but I'm doing it in the same way as I did it in Sharjah. So, but when I was moving towards the end of this installation, I made a sharp edge over there. I masked it and I just finished my painting before it's uh, before the rooftop finishes. So the, that area was left clean. So people who were coming over there, they were hesitating to walk on it. They were thinking that whether they should walk on it. And when they start walking on it, they were getting comfortable after some time. And when they were coming towards the end, they were getting uncomfortable with the cleaner space. So because after 9-11, there were so many bomb blasts in Pakistan also, and, uh, and we were getting used to, to it. So when something was not happening for three months, four months, everybody was thinking there is no bomb blast for three months. So they were getting uncomfortable with this idea that why something hasn't happened. So, so I was just dealing with that kind of psyche in this piece as well. So this was a kind of finishing line, uh, and I was just talking about something else through it. And then the miniatures. Self-portrait, me, artist at work. This was Sydney Biennial, and this was Cockatoo Island. So this was the island where they used to have, uh, during the World War, uh, the ships for taking uh, uh, weapons to the other part. Uh, so I was just, uh, and there were already these uh, 
rust-like marks over there because there were a lot of metal in the concrete floor. So, so I was just, I, may, I weaved my own painted imagery with these rust marks in the same way as they were moving towards water. It was in Sydney. Okay. Yeah. This is the detail. Again, detail of the same island. Same island. And this was in East Lansing, where I was painting and I did a wash. Uh, so I was supposed, I was asked to do something in the downtown, in the very public space. And there was a lot of traffic of people and other cars and other traffic as well. So uh, it was very really difficult for me to work in such a public space, but I started enjoying it as well. So one night I did a splashes in one of the area of the city. And then when I came later, so some truck went at the top of my painted imagery and they just left the marks of the tire over there. So instead of getting Panicking, I was looking at it and I thought of, I, I painted it in a way that the foliage has been lifted up through the truck and it left the foliage somewhere else uh, through the impression of the tires. So this is the detail you can see. And then there was the ambulance standing. So I just found it very interesting, interesting uh, conversation. <laughs> This is uh, Aga Khan Museum in Toronto. So they wanted, they invited me to, me to do after this uh, East Lansing and Metropolitan Museum, they wanted me to do something in their garden as well. And they asked me how many red tubes you want. And I said, why I want red tube? <laughs> they, they were, they, it was understood that I will use red color over there. And I was unable to relate red color with Aga Khan Museum or Toronto with this part of North America. So, and I, and it was, their garden is planned. Uh, the planning was done uh, on the idea of a, this uh, multiple reflecting ponds in Islamic architecture. So I made the reflection of the garden within the garden in green colors. But I was commenting on the global warming and how these water pond, which looks black, the water has been spilled out and just spreading all over the surface and it's really giving a feel. Aga Khan Museum in Toronto, yes. So this is the detail of the black color. And there were lavender flowers, so I just made a connection with that as well. These were my son. They were just enjoying the installation. And the miniature while I was working on it. This was in Bradford. So this is a Mughal garden. They called it Mughal garden, but strangely, there was no ornamentation as you see in Mughal garden. This was in uh, UK. And so I added the ornamentation element through my painted imagery in my own way. Uh, like I followed the tile pattern and I was making this drawing with black color because all the water channels were painted black. So water looks really black. So I was just making a extension of the same water in this space. This piece is called garden within a garden. And this was in the downtown of Bradford at the same time. Uh, there, there were a lot of water ponds in this area and one water pond, pond was, they just probably finished it and it was temporarily closed with this, uh, some material, uh, temporary material. So I painted a water pond with blue color over there. This was in Olba, uh, Museum of Modern Art, Constant Museum of Modern Art. So they reopened, they closed down the museum for renovation, major renovation and they reopened it with my solo exhibition. So in the basement, so historically when they opened it first time originally, so there was this flooding in the basement and it, it destroyed a lot of artworks over there. So I was just recalling the history at the second opening as well. 
by having these leakages coming from the AC uh, openings on the wall and spreading all over the surface. This was in uh, Siana, what the city is, where these old towers are. San Gimiano. Yeah. So I worked at the top of the tower. Oh, this is what I did over there. So I was just referring to the history of these towers and the war, the violence which was happening, and the miniatures. Uh, National Cathedral in Washington. So it was all about purifying yourself when you go to a spiritual place or a re religious place. This was at Al Ain, Abu Dhabi, uh, Oasis. So I used two gardens as a diptych gardens and I painted one garden with blue color and another one with the red color. I was commenting on the global warming, importance of water, and the miniatures. <coughs> From miniature to mountain, when I did Sharjah Biennial, uh, we have time? Sorry, what time is it? Okay. So we, when we have Sharjah Biennial, I re, so there was a lot of, it was suddenly in the media and everywhere and people were talking about it. So I wanted to bring that sh courtyard of Sharjah somehow to Lahore. And the way I found a solution of getting images of the courtyard and got it printed on uh, large scale papers and crumbled them and put it as a mountain in the middle of the gallery space. So these were images of the Sharjah courtyard. Uh, and this piece is called, and they still seek traces of blood, because there were so many people who involved in creating this piece. And when they were working, it was more like a performance. They were crumbling the paper, throwing it in, in the middle of the gallery space. So I was just talking about when some incident of violence happened, these are the common, common people who suffered with it. And when it happened, these are the institutions who asked common people to stay away from the site. And the, the authorities do the investigation and nobody knows whatever they are telling us, we have to believe on it. So there are a lot of truths which are, which are not being told to people. So this is all about that people can come, they can touch, they can recreate it, they can have their own investigation, they can make their own narrative. So they were free to be part of this site, of this kind of image. No, I, I, I had the uh, Im phot uh, photographic images of the Sharjah courtyard and then I got them printed on thousands of paper, on both sides of the paper, different images, yeah. And then we crumbled them and we made a huge mountain. So then this piece went to Berlin. So every space and every country, the same idea was traveling, but it was, there was something different which was adding uh, to the same idea. So when it, so this is the detail you can see. So it went to Berlin like this and they were more conscious about the health and safety regulations so I had to keep all sides of the gallery clean so that people can walk. Whereas in Lahore people were walking on the paper. This was an icon gallery, Birmingham. So I created a wound like hole inside that mountain. This was in Olber, Kunsten. So the scale was really high over there. Yeah, it was huge. Kunsten, uh, uh, Olberg, Museum of Modern Art. This was in East Lansing. Sorry. I'm printing every time. Sometime I use Metropolitan rooftop, sometime I use East Lansing, different uh, photographs. So this is in East Lansing, uh, the, uh, the Broad Museum. So it was by Zaha Hadid. So her is typical architecture and the wall was inclined towards the outer side of the museum. So it was concrete wall but it's got going outward. So I created my mountain in a way that it's, it's actually pressing the concrete wall. 
it's paper very fragile material but when it comes into a quantity it become more powerful than the concrete wall and it's just pressing the concrete wall and in falling on the other side so people can walk through this corridor like space so it's just coming over you what year was this uh, this was 2000 i think 14 or 15 okay. this was in paris uh, one of the library and it was part of the new blanche and it was for one night yeah. so this uh, is a library paris so this is a library about books of law and then I created this mountain in the middle and people were coming reading books and then this was over there. This was in Museum of Modern Art, MOCA Museum of Modern and Modern Art in uh, Antwerp. So the room was circular and I decided to make a sea-like horizon line just to catch the calmness of the space. This was in Islamabad. This is how they create this mountain. Uh, if like I need about 15 to 20 people, uh, and then it can be done in four days, three, four days, if the paper is printed and ready, material is there. This was in Yerevan, Armenia. This, this was in Truro Cathedral uh, in Penzance, UK. Uh, it was south of UK, I think. And so I decided to use Awa Khan, garden from Awa Khan Museum of Islamic Art into a church. And it was over there. And it was more about that it looks like a garbage in, in a very religious space. And people were saying, what is this? How, why you put the garbage in there? cathedral and a Muslim artist is just making a mountain of garbage in a cathedral so it became very controversial in that way but then the idea was that people are very judgmental about others because when you come close to it these are beautiful images of garden not a garbage at all so people give comment or their judgment on other people very quickly whereas in the eyes of God nobody knows who's good or bad so that was my idea. And the a guard. Yeah, 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 I did it on purpose. They did, they were very happy. They were happy? Yeah, they commissioned. Because there is gallery in ex, uh, Exchange Art Gallery in Penzance. So it was their project. They talked to church authorities. Which cathedral is Truro. Yeah, yeah, I explained them. I explained them. Because the idea of garden is very much in all religion. So I was also referring to that as well. And this was in Exchange Art Gallery where I created this horizon line. <coughs> this was in Brent Biennial recently during COVID in London, Ealing Road Library. Uh, and I created this glass-like aquarium space with the paper inside. And later on, I, when I, I took back all these installations back to Lahore uh, and compressing them, these are different cities. One block is from Sharjah, New York, Sydney, and made the brick like. You cast them? I cast them. Yeah, I cast them, and then I displayed them at, a, at this brick factory, abundant brick factory, because there were a lot of act of violence happening in these big brick factories and I was just referring to the, them. So these were just going for baking and over there. This is called dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth. So I was also taking landscape as one of my subject matter, important subject matter. And I started making landscape which looks very beautiful, but then there is something threatening in it, very disturbing in it. And there's a narrative between, I take trees as a figure or a body, and their 
relationship with other trees, with the other environment around them. This is called rise and fall. Trespass. So nature is making its own way of coming to the other side. This is again drawings in the form of landscape. These are two trees. They are more like kissing each other. So it's the red color is seeping into another tree. This is called story of two. So there's a video, but I will skip it. Uh, and I was also looking at the large scale canvases. Idea was my all my large scale installations are for the specific time period. And uh, and when I was making them, people are looking at them as a on the on a larger context. But when I was making them, if you see each and every mark, it's so delicate, it's so poetic, and I somehow I wanted viewer to enjoy that as well individually. So I decided to paint the same imagery on large scale canvases so that people can read them in fragments or parts. So these are large-scale canvases uh, in the form of portraits, oval shape again. This was for the Deutsche Bank Artist of the Year Award exhibition. This is called Midnight. This is with collaboration with Christian Lobitan in for his exhibition. So I used his shoe and created this political statement about uh, the economy and how people value it, but when something happened, you just leave your shoe and run away. So it's all covered with the gold leaf. This was in pandemic and it's called still breathing. So importance of mask and uh, it's very fragile thing. It's metallic. It's like a gold for everyone now. So it was, it, this project was on the billboard. So a lot of artists work for the billboards in Lahore during pandemic. So I made this thing and I modeled myself. This was in Islamabad airport, a mural. And this was a cricket project, which I recently did. Uh, I have a short one minute video, just a quick early. This was for Islamabad United and this was for this gear kit for the cricket team. And it was the most recent project I did. Yes. Thank you.
So, uh, as a miniature painter, uh, trained as a miniature painter, painter, uh, most of my fellow artists were conscious of this fact that they are miniature painter and there are certain yes and no's for them. But I was thinking that I'm an artist and my training was very strict. Uh, and when, whenever I was doing anything, somehow it was bridging with miniature painting, but that was not a conscious decision. For me, it was more important that uh, what I want to say at that time, what are my feelings, and how I want to translate. So medium doesn't matter to me, scale doesn't matter to me. Uh, it is more about how it should be said, what I want to say. Back to the miniature, to record these events in miniature as a memory. Yeah. So the, I have, yeah. so the reaction was, I think initially it was uh, quite positive, interestingly. Even my teacher, he is really happy with me now, whatever I am doing. So I feel that at that stage it was important, uh, the way he wanted me to value the tradition. If I haven't learned it, if I haven't gone through that, uh, that hard or strict training, I would not be doing this thing, what I am doing right now. So, because otherwise things are superficially done and they are on surface. Uh, so I always value his, his ideas and his uh, way of teaching miniature at that time. Uh, but it is also on the artist as well that what you are doing, you should know what you are doing and how you have to do it and how you make respect tradition and at the same time you are doing the way you want to take it further from that traditional thing to the to the contemporary art of the modern things. It's, 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 it's wonderful to be able to marry that, to be honest, to be, you know, uh, be able to marry traditional with, with contemporary and, and to really progress the art, you know, into, into, into the future. Exactly. I think you've done that beautifully. Do we have any more questions? I think for me, a lot of people ask me that how you manage to shift to that large scale things uh, from that small scale. So when I was doing miniature as a student, uh, I was director of the puppet society at the art school also. So we were doing a lot of performances on the large scale auditorium. So that was more like a canvas for me. And I was working with a team of 20 people and I was the director of that uh, club. Uh, student club, so I had to work on different levels. But at the same time, same day I was going to miniature studio and working quietly on the is my small size miniature. So for me, shifting the scale was never be a problem. 
uh, I was giving equal value to the large scale painting and the smaller scale. It is very spiritual even when I am doing large scale because painting thousands of leaves in one installation, it's a very meditative process. Yeah. And for me, if you see each and every leaf of my painting, if you see over here also, you will see it's very much calligraphic. The line is very much like a line from a calligraphy. It's not like a, the flat, plain line. It has a certain thickness and certain kind of movement in it. So for me, it's write, like writing a text also. Yeah. Yeah, I so I was just, there's a hope as well, so there is a violence which is everywhere, but then there's still a hope. So I'm just referring, for me that hope is very important. So it looks very violent image, but when you come close to it, it is, there's a lot of hope in it. So without hope, otherwise we should have died years ago if there's no hope. So I'm referring to that idea. And there's always, as I talked earlier that, I'm talking about always two opposite things, whether on conceptual level or on formal level. So here also, this is about life or death or beauty or violence. So there are two. How many? Kilos. Oh. The paper, because I presume you cannot know really certain structure underneath. No, no. If it's paper, uh, there are just two or three works which had a structure in it. There, there was a reason because I was, especially the Zaha Hadid one, because I wanted to make it like this, that it's been chopped off, the mountain has been chopped off, and it's pressing the concrete wall. So there was structure in that. Uh, and there was structure. Yeah, people can walk through. So the that, that had a that had a the su support, not structure, just just a thin support, yeah. and then the the rest of the mountain was just the paper. So uh, there was this uh, uh, in Islamabad when I was working on this mountain thing. So I created it, and it was huge with thirty thousand sheets of paper. And then later we d I realized that I did it on the wrong space. It's blocking the gallery space. So I had to move the whole mountain on the other side. So, so there were students from Koita and Peshawar who came especially to help me out. And so they pushed the mountain and moved it to the other corner of the gallery. And the way they were doing it became like an amazing, really powerful performance. Yeah. The, how the landscape was changing and they were rebuilding a new landscape with this blood-soaked paper. And so, but the weight was not an issue. The weight. the weight is not an issue because weight is on the floor ultimately. So it's the paper, it's just the paper.
Uh, no, I don't. I just clean it with the broom brush, with the dust part. Otherwise, the surface is as it is. So uh, this is the beauty of the work that every time I find a new surface, new space, new uh, area, which added something new to my art practice. And uh, if I keep the quality same of the surface, it's not the same. And I had the, the most difficult time in Sydney where the sun was so strong and the surface was, I didn't realize that surface was just absorbing all the paint. And it was hard to look at my own painted imagery. And I was almost like blind. And the scale was enormous. Uh, so it became so challenging. So I was keeping some drums to create a certain shade just to look at my own painted thing and became really stressful thing in that way, technically. So then I decided that I should make a little test before. <laughs> that was it. But it came out nicely, but uh, yeah, but was, became really big challenge for me. I've been teaching for past almost 27 years, I think, I don't know, yeah, something like that. So there are so many artists, miniature painter who are, uh, who's been taught by me. So, so uh, I don't, they are in trust, uh, quite really good work and I'm very hopeful with this whole movement. Uh, but when we were a student, the scenario was totally different. There were very few examples. Uh, there were no example, actually, of the contemporary miniature painter. So we had to find our own way. So in that way, I found myself very lucky. But now there are so many, and they were, uh, the teaching was very strict, but now the teaching is not that strict. And we let them do whatever they want to do. If they want to do videos, I let them do. If they want to do installation, I let them do. But our teacher was not. Uh, but he was, I mean, I always respect him as I said, what he taught us was very important too and uh, maybe I'm not doing justice to that side right now. Do you uh, do some things the same as your teacher? Do you teach some things the same as your teacher was teaching? I prefer to do few things. I believe on the idea of copying the traditional miniature in certain number was very important. Now a lot of other faculty members outside my department. They said, this is not important. Why do you want, why do they have to do copies? But I feel that it was very important for me and for them as well. So, uh, insist I insist on that. I, I said there's no shortcut to that. But I think also technique-wise, uh, I mean, I know from the workshop that you gave the last few days uh, in Iran, how much you, you really insisted on, on learning the, the, the proper techniques. And, and once you've mastered yeah. Then you, you can allow yourself to experiment and, and evolve. Exactly, because a lot of students were curious and they were asking other things than what I was telling them. So I was asking them to focus on this right now. This is important. And you should practice it and then uh, you explore these things as you want to do. I get it, but I don't know. When you are clear what you are doing, so you don't need to be worried about it. I think I'm clear and I know what I'm saying. And if people comment, they can talk to me. <laughs> I'm there. So, and, uh, so there are a lot of misconceptions about different societies as well. Uh, like for Pakistan also, people think there is no liberty of doing art in Pakistan. But I, I saw many examples in West of censoring the artworks. So uh, in Pakistan, I never had, like there was a show of miniature artists uh, and 
there was one of the painting was removed from the show because the museum thought that uh, it might hurt the sentiments of the people. And for me, it was not that kind of piece at all. And they were oversensitive about that piece. So, and people, a lot of people say that, uh, and that piece was being shown in Pakistan before, showing in uh, USA. So, uh, this was a huge thing for me. I was shocked to know that they removed it. And in Pakistan, everybody accepted that piece. So, even before coming to Saudi, I had a different concept about Saudi Arabia. And when I'm here, I'm finding it wonderful and fantastic. It was so, different. yeah, it's when you are actually there, it's uh, it's totally different. And we are when you are looking at things from a distance, it's totally different. So, so yes. which project did you enjoy most from all these projects you did? Uh, Museums and everything. Something that really. I when I don't enjoy, I don't work. When I don't enjoy, I don't work. Okay. I refuse. <laughs> so I, I enjoy my work. I think it's important that you should enjoy your work. Of course, yeah. If you are not enjoying the work, uh, you may lose something in your work. Then it's better to stay and wait. Yeah. yeah. Because you were saying, I suffered. Yeah. Because when I was in Paris and uh, for New Blanche, and they asked me to do something at the Notre Dame, and it was a big thing to do something, but do no yeah, and I was interested into one of the very ordinary area. That was that was something which I was relating myself, and I refused to work at Notre Dame, and I chose that area. So it was not about the big name or something like that. It was more about where you are comfortable and what you want to do. Yeah. This is done. This was, a, this was done already. It was a collaboration. Between yeah, this was the cricket yeah. project. So was next time he does it, we'll come ah, to participate yeah. in the video. Sure. In the video. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have two minutes, I can show one. I want to show one curatorial part. Oh, it's, oh, if, if anyone if is some, interested, uh, it's a small video about my curatorial project for first Lahore Biennial. And One thing that was important was we needed to have a very good leader. And that we had. 
approached Imran, and Imran instantly saw the merit of this idea. And whereas we originally thought, let's bring together maybe four or five artists, he said, let's create a proper painter's workshop. And so he identified 24 young artists, and thus began this wonderful journey in which over the period of three weeks, I was the curator of this whole project and I was there as an instructor as well. But these artists were all the professional artists. I was not interested in dictating them and what they have to make and what they should not make during this whole project. When you enter there, it looks like that this is their home and they are working there and they are living there and all the time these artists are there. This project to me was magical, and I think that it was something that in terms of conception straight through to delivery uh, proved the merits of being able to blend contemporary art with history. And that's something that Art Collins is very keen to uh, promote. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>